Investing is simply putting money in places that will help your money grow. Think of it as money farming. Did you know that your money can actually make more money? That's right. If you are smart with your money and invest, you're actually allowing that money to work for you. What an incredible concept. Now, we all know we must work for money, but real wealth is achieved when your money grows big enough to start working for you. The best news is you don't have to be rich to invest. You'll learn this in this lesson to start investing even when you don't have that much money. Did you know that the amount of money a person makes has very little to do with how wealthy they become? There are some people who make $100,000 a year, but have thousands of dollars worth of debt and no money saved. Then there are others who make $40,000 a year, but have no debt and invest part of their earnings. See, you're learning that building wealth is 20% knowledge and 80% behavior. Well, investing just like saving and budgeting and living debt-free are all behaviors of the wealthy. Now, retirement planning is establishing a game plan for how you will support yourself once you reach retirement age. It may seem like a long way off at your age, but the truth is the sooner you begin planning and saving for retirement, the better off you'll be. Investing and retirement planning are part of your fifth foundation, build wealth and give. In this chapter, we show you how to build wealth. Investing, man, that puts me to sleep. It's boring. I don't understand it. It goes over my head. I'm going to nod off now. No, you're not. Because I tell you what, I told you earlier and I've told you a thousand times, if you live like no one else later, you get to... There's no point in getting out of debt if you're not going to use the fact that you freed up all that income to go build wealth with. This is the other part. This is the build wealth part. What should you invest in as a young adult? Well, that's a great question. First and foremost, you've got to invest in yourself. And that means taking control of your schedule and building in time for reading and exploring new ideas and even thinking about your future. It means spending time doing the things we're talking about in this class, things like budgeting and finding scholarships if you're heading off to college. It also means spending time working so you can learn the value of money and have the cash on hand to have some fun, buy a car, invest in the future. Investing in yourself is always the best investment you can make. Beyond that, follow the five foundations that we've talked about in this class. First, we save up the $500 emergency fund, then get out of debt, and then save money for a car in college, and that takes you to the fifth foundation, which is build wealth and give. For wealth building, I recommend tax-favored retirement plans like a Roth IRA. Now, you can open a Roth IRA even if you're in high school if you have an earned income each year and file a tax return, even if it's just a part-time job. You can also do a 401k if your company offers you one. Beyond that, I recommend that you stick to mutual funds and spread your investments out into four kinds of mutual funds, growth, growth and income, aggressive growth, and international. Don't play complicated games with big time long-term investing. Most millionaires have really, really simple plans for their investing. They just do the same simple thing over and over again in the long haul. And if you start today, you're going to be blown away by how easy it is to build a pile of wealth that could totally change not only your future, but your whole family tree. Now this bicycle, well, it represents what I call the pinnacle point. I remember growing up in Tennessee, we would go out riding on our bicycles. Now, in Tennessee, when you out riding on your bicycles, it's just, you don't just go like this, you know? 
It's either like this or it's like this or you're stopped. These are your only options. It's up or it's down. And I'll never forget a gazillion times as a kid, I'd come along a street and the street would be going like this. And, and you know, little bitty guy, one gear. I didn't have all these gears. I had one gear. Did y'all ever have one gear? And you can't paddle. I mean, my little legs, when I was a little guy, I couldn't. So what you have to do is switch back, don't you? You back and forth and bang. And sometimes when you just go down while you're going back and forth, you can't, you know what I'm talking, try to get a little speed and go up a little bit. You know what I'm talking, you did it too, didn't you? You know what I'm talking, you work and you work and you're like out of breath and you're sweating and you're over on the curb going, I'm never going to make it, I'm never going to make it. And you're back and you're forth and you climb and you climb and you climb until you reach that point right on top of the hill. When you're right at the apex, right at the top, right as it goes over, there's a moment there, isn't there, where you're just balanced. The work is behind you and the ride is before you. You know what I'm talking about? That's called the pinnacle point. That's what I call it. There's that same place in your money. You work and you climb and you sweat. You may have just one gear. And you, sometimes you got to pull over and rest. And you switch back. And your friends are calling at you because they went a little faster. You got friends behind you making fun of you because they don't think anybody can climb that hill. Nobody can get rich. And the little man just can't get ahead. And you work and you work and you work and you work. And finally you reach that top point. Because you know the ride down is going to be fun. You can put your feet up on the handlebars, kick back. If, you, if I had hair, it'd blow through it. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? You can cruise down, can't you? Once you get to the top. But that, there's that moment right there, that instant in time when life changes. When the work is done and you go, Whew. Financially, that, is, that pinnacle point is when you have enough of a nest egg that your nest egg makes more money for you this year than you made for you this year. That's a cool place to get to. That's the pinnacle point. That's where I want to take you to with this lesson. Let's start with the basics. Keep it simple, stupid. Now, I'm not calling you stupid, but I'm just telling you, keep it simple, silly. You can call it, fill it in however you want. It's the KISS principle. You probably heard that, haven't you? And when it comes to investing, you can do the same thing. The biggest mistake people make is some people are too smart for their own good. In an effort to be sophisticated, they do stupid things. The wealthy people that I know have very plain, very simple processes that they use. All of these guys that have all this smoke and mirrors and all these other things going on, they're, they don't make it. When I meet them 20 years later, they're broke. The smoke and mirrors took them down. Wealthy people that I know do very, it's painfully simple. It's ridiculous how simple their lives are. They do not overstep the bounds of what they understand. It does not mean that you're stupid if you make simple investments. On the contrary, it means you were wise enough to know what your limitations of your knowledge are. So you never, ever, ever put money in something because I said to. You never, ever, ever put money in something because anyone said to. You gather information from teachers like me, from people in the business. And as you gather that information, you put money in things you understand. If you don't understand it well enough to teach a bunch of seventh graders how it works, you are not ready to put money in it. You work too hard to trust a guy in a good suit with a slick speech. Do not put money in stuff until you understand how it works, period. And you know, sometimes these financial people, they, they don't mean to, and some of them do mean to because they got egos. I've been around the financial world my whole working life, and there's a couple of different things going on there, but some of it's ego and some of it's just stupidity. We get our own little set of words in every industry, don't we? We have our own vernacular. And you ever sat down and talked to a lawyer and you had no idea what they were saying? You ever had a doctor come in and say, try to tell you what was going on? He sounds like Charlie Brown's teacher. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. I had that happen one time. My wife was having headaches and so we took her in for an MRI and the doctor comes back out to tell us what's going on and he comes in and he's like, wah, 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 wah. And I raised my hand and he said, yes, sir, you. And I said, I have no idea what you just said. And he said, okay. And I said, well, let me try it again this way. 
me havey the checky bookie. <laughs> you want to get paid, you're going to tell us what you just said in English. You know, that guy grew a bedside manner right there in front of us and began to tell us they had no idea what was wrong with my wife's head. I could have told them that for a lot less than $8,000. <laughs> it's the only sharing joke. We don't do sharing jokes. We're smart. Okay, now, but ser seriously, I mean, don't sometimes financial people come in, they sound like Charlie Brown's teacher. Wah, 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 wah. Shut up. If you can't speak to me in a way that I can understand what's going on, I am not going to be able to do business with you. This is your phrase. You remember that phrase and you repeat that phrase for the rest of your life to insurance people, to mutual fund brokers, to estate planners, to real estate people, to mortgage people. Anybody who starts talking to you in another language and you don't get it, don't play it off and act like, well, I'm too dumb and I don't wanna, I'm gonna sit here and act like I know what's going on and I'm gonna sign anyway. And then three, three years later, find out you are neck deep in a stupid mess. Do not put money in something until you can tell me or someone else how it works. You want financial people in your life, but you want ones with the heart of a teacher. And about 85% of the people in the financial industry do not have the heart of a teacher. They have the heart of a salesman. They're there to pitch stuff and pitch them out the door is what you need to do. You need to get the ones, that 15% that has the heart of a teacher and they will teach you. You'll, you know how they know that? You, you, you know how you'll know they have the heart of a teacher? Because you learn. Have you ever seen a movie that has some dull, boring, stuffed shirt, corporate zombie droning on and on and on about something? <laughs> yeah, I can't stand that guy. But all too often, that's exactly who you'll find sitting behind the desk of an insurance or a financial planning office. And you'll be able to spot them pretty quickly because they'll put their glasses on the end of their nose and they'll look down on you while they explain to you what you should do with your money. Uh-uh. You know what I figured out a long time ago? These guys work for me. I'm paying them for their advice. I don't owe them anything. And if they want to treat me like a child, then I'll just fire them and find somebody else. Here's the deal. Your money is your responsibility. You can't just hand it over to someone in a nice suit and expect them to make all the decisions. Whenever you're working with someone, especially in the financial world, you've got to make sure they have the heart of a teacher, not the heart of a salesman. That means they're gonna spend time with you actually having conversations about what they think you should do. It means you can ask a million questions and they never seem to get tired of it. It means their job is to load you up with enough information to make your own decisions with your money. And if you don't understand how something works, then you shouldn't buy it. Well, that's true with computers or investments or anything else. Always, always, always work with a pro who has the heart of a teacher. And if you're working with someone who talks down to you and gets impatient with your questions, then you just need to say two magic words. You're fired. And that'll shut them up pretty fast, and you can move on and find somebody who's a winner with the heart of a teacher. <laughs>